Hi everyone, this is Mindy for Scrapbook and Cards Today magazine, and I'm excited today to share with you a quick introduction to the Spellbinders Better Press Letter Press. They were kind enough to send me the starter bundle along with a few extra plates, and that is what I'm going to use today to create two cards and show you two different techniques. So this is my unboxing when I received this from Spellbinders. I opened up the package and this is what you are going to get. You have a sampler pack of their cardstock. It is a specialty cardstock. We'll talk more about that later. There is an ink pad, a mini black ink pad, some best ever craft tape, and then you have your platform. Now they have very specific words for these. I probably will screw it up throughout the video, but I will try my best to have the proper terminology. So I opened everything up and you are getting the letterpress die. There's also two sentiments on there. You're getting a little booklet that is explaining everything that you're receiving in this starter kit. The starter kit really does contain everything you need to get started. All you need is a die cutting machine. I will be using the Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cut machine. Included in this booklet are also some examples and they also have examples on their website as well, plus some additional products that I will be using today in the video. So now we have, I believe what they call this top piece is a plant plantain, um, I believe is what it's called. I removed that clear piece that was on top. Honestly, I'll probably just call it a plate. And then your bottom piece here, which I believe they call the chase, Honestly, here, I'll probably just call it my platform because those are the terms that I'm familiar with. There are three thin shims. Then you have this top piece with the grid on it. There's a little lip down at the bottom that helps you pick that up and you'll place your three thin shims in there. Now, the reason they have shims right now is because they do plan on coming out with thicker cardstock, which is where you would want to remove those shims. But for now, with the cardstock available, we do want to use those shims. So I place those underneath, and our top plate here has four magnetic corners, which helps lift the plate off of that base until we're ready to run that through the die cut machine. For the inks, you are getting a black one that's inc included in the kit. There are other colors available. Also, I will be using in today's video. This is a special formulated ink that they have worked out with Ranger. Now, I haven't experiment experimented with other inks. That's something for another video. Right now, I am just using what's in the kit and what Spellbinders has recommended. Same thing with the cardstock. It is a special formulated cardstock that they found to work best for this letterpress design. Once again, I'm going to experiment more with other cardstocks. There was just way too much to try and experiment with in one video. So I'm limiting myself to one thing that I wanted to work on. But I will say this is a beautiful cardstock. And they do provide a nice sampling of it in the starter kit. Now, as far as the dies, these dies are once again kind of special formulated for doing letterpress techniques. From what I understand of watching the Spellbinders videos is you can use these dies to do glimmer hot foiling, but you cannot take your glimmer plates and use them in the letterpress. So it only goes one way. It's a one way street. I am excited to try glimmer fo hot foiling with these dies. Again, it's just something I need to do on another day. One thing I will say about these dies is I'm glad that they are a different color so that you can tell in your stash which are your better press plates and which ones are your die cutting and glimmer hot foil plates. When they say this is a foolproof system, it really is. I was honestly kind of intimidated at first. I don't know why. It's always scary doing something for the first time, but it really is easy. So the first thing I did is took one of their specialty card stocks. I placed it within the A2 size grid lines, and I'm holding that down with the best ever craft tape. You can tape it on the top and bottom like I did or up in the corners. Now, this platform is magnetic. So when you place your die down, it really is kind of stuck there. You can move it around. You have some wiggle room. So I placed mine within the A2 size grid lines. This is the die or the plate from the starter kit. It has two different or it's two sentiments. The word favorite is just spelled differently. So I'm going to line up my sentiment using the grid lines on that platform. I 
love these grid lines. I wanted to test out really quick if my magnetic tool would pick that up. It does not. It is a pretty strong magnet. So once I have that in place, I'm going to place my plate on top. The four magnets in the top and bottom are going to attach. So what that does is it lifts that off of your paper or lifts it off of the platform until you're ready to run this through your machine. So I was just kind of testing that out. I removed the plate and now I'm going to ink up this plate. So this is once again the specialty ink from uh, Spellbinders and Ranger and I'm going to ink this up really well. From what I've seen, they suggest a kind of a pounce and pivot. So I'm pressing down and just slightly pivoting my ink pad a little bit. Now, when I am doing my inking, I really do take my time. I go over it multiple times to make sure that I have really good coverage. Kind of one of the best tips that you can get out of this is that when you have your image inked up really well, that is when you're going to get the best results. Once I have the whole image covered with the ink and the sentiment, I'm taking my plate and I'm going to flip it over so that my paper is facing that die. Now it's connecting by those magnetic areas in the four corners. So once I have that in place, I'm going to run this through my Platinum 6 die cut machine. You do not want to press your plate down until the machine does it for you. And don't force the platform into the machine. Just let the rollers kind of catch it, guide it through, go slow, and you are going to get an amazing impression. I will do this a few times throughout the video. So once I run that through the machine, I'm being careful too when I remove this not to push down on that plate. But once I bring it over, I'm going to just carefully release those magnets and lift up my plate. And we have this absolutely gorgeous letterpress design in this black ink. Now, I have seen letterpress before. I don't think I've actually ever done it. I've seen them on invitations, things like that. And I was always super impressed and just kind of mesmerized by it. And this, I was excited to be able to do this myself so easily. The ink also dries quickly. So I can rub my finger over it. It has this beautiful feeling to it. It's something that when they say you have to just see it in person to believe it, it it's totally true because cameras just cannot catch how amazing this is. And to run your finger over it, the ink is dry. That is super impressive. So it's one of those things you just kind of want to sit and pet it because it feels so cool. So now one of the things I want to show you is cleaning your plates and your platinum or your chase the platform. <laughs> I told you I would not get these words right. What you're going to need is the archival cleaner. Now they recommend the archival cleaner. It's not to say that other cleaners won't work. They have just said that this is what they found works best. So what you'll want to do is tap this all over your plate to clean it off. You don't want to drag this across the plate because you'll probably ruin the top of your um, dauber. And then you just wipe it away with a towel. Now, I did find that it was just a lot easier to clean my plate when you remove it from that platform. So I'm going to take those off and I'm going to rub down my platform here. It's probably never going to look as pristine as it was when it came out of the box. And after all my use that I did in this video, it, it does have some staining. So do expect some staining. But by using the archival cleaner, you can clean up kind of the main points of ink. One thing I will recommend is don't let the ink sit there. Um, I would recommend cleaning it off right away. Now for your plates, you don't have to clean them each time after use unless you plan on switching colors. But I'm just kind of one of those clean freaks when it comes to my dyes and stamps. So I do clean mine quite a bit. There are a few other products that go with the Better Press that Spellbinders has sent me. This is the Always and Forever. So this is a sentiment set. It has all the sentiments in one pass so you can do it all at once and also a coordinating die to die cut them out all at once. Another new product that I will be using today is the Pressed Bouquet. Gorgeous floral arrangement. No coordinating die, but this one is going to look beautiful as a centerpiece on the front of the card. Then we have the Butterfly Garden. So this one actually has three pieces to it. You can do all of them at once, or you can create the floral border around it. You can do the sentiment, or you can die cut out the butterfly 
and that sentiment separately. So there are a few coordinating dies that go with this set. Then we have the swirl birthday frame. So this has a beautiful swirl, obviously, going around the edge of your cardstock. This fits really well with an A2 size card front. And then it does have a coordinating die if you wanted to die cut out the sentiment in the center. There are a few other products available right now. I don't have those in my hand just yet, but they are definitely in my shopping cart. Now, this is a really great catalog that gives a lot of examples and shows you how each of these are used or can be used. When it comes to coloring in the image that you see here in the catalog, you need to be using uh, water-based inks. You cannot use alcohol markers in with it. So I actually have um, experimented a little bit doing my watercolors and coloring in some floral images that way. But they have different sizes of cardstocks or the papers to use with it. So this is going to be a lot of fun. I love that they released additional products other than what's in the starter kit just to give you a few other options and then I know there's going to be more fun things in the future. Now they do also have a variety of ink. I have a few of them here. There is another packet available as well that's also in my shopping cart. So now I'm going to get into creating my cards. So here I removed my plantain. And I'm going to place this cardstock right inside those A2 size or that A2 grid marks, holding that down with the best ever craft tape. Now I'm coming over to my chase, which is magnetic, and I'm placing the pressed bouquet inside of those A2 size markings. So it's going to line up perfectly with my paper. I'm going to ink it up with the black ink and I'm doing that whole press and pounce or pounce and twist <laughs> type of movement to really ink up my plate. Once I have that completely covered and you're going to notice that this ink sits really well on top of these plates. It's not beating up or anything. That is part of the specially designed formula in these plates. So once that is completely covered with ink, I'm going to bring in my plantain connect those with the magnets in the corners and just place that down. You just really want to make sure that your cardstock is not touching that plate until you run it through your die cutting machine. Once I pull up on those magnets to, to remove the plate or the plantain, now we have this beautifully etched design. Now you can go back and run it through again in case you didn't get enough ink coverage, but I have found I have not had to do that. You can because the uh, platform is magnetic, but I haven't had to run it through a second time unless I was doing um, something like a multi-inking technique. Now I just want to show you a couple of the other plates. This is the Always and Forever Sentiments. Once again, I have my cardstock taped down onto my plantain, and then I'm going to ink this up in one of the blue colors that is in my little assortment of inks. Once again, inking that up really well, I just placed that sentiment plate right in the center of my A2 grid marks, and then I can run this through the Platinum 6 die cutting machine. Now they do offer on their website, it's in the FAQ section, the different sandwich or how you would be able to use different die cut machines. So if you don't have a Platinum 6, they do offer information about how to use this with those machines. Since I had my sentiments out, I went ahead and did it in black as well, so I have options. And then I'm taking the coordinating die, lining it up over the sentiments and holding that down with the best ever craft tape. And this is going to die cut all of these sentiments at once. So I did this for both the uh, set that I did in the black ink and the set that I did in the blue. So that way I can kind of play back and forth with some different ideas. And then if you don't care for the flags on the end, you can always use your scissors or a paper trimmer to trim those off. I have one more plate that I wanted to show you what it was like when it had that letterpress effect. This is the butterfly garden. So I did this one all at once. I did the border and also the sentiment in the center, but this one comes with coordinating dies. So I was kind of just experimenting here and playing with what it looks like when things are cut out. For this one, I used the die to cut out the sentiment and the butterfly. And then I took the small butterfly die and I just cut out that butterfly, which I do end up using in one of my card projects today. 
and then one more die to die cut out just the sentiment and not that decorative border. So this is one of my favorites. It's got a lot of options to it. Now back into how do we color our images instead of leaving them just kind of pressed in black ink. And what you need to do is color them if you prefer in a water-based ink. It cannot be dye ink. It's got to be water-based ink works best with this. So for this, I am bringing out, I think this is my uh, Magello Mission Gold watercolors. Any watercolors will work. You could even use zig markers, or if you have distress inks, you could put some reinker down onto your work surface, as long as it's meant for water coloring. So I am just going through and applying some watercolor to my image. I was not real careful about, you know, shading, things like that. It's just a really nice process because quite honestly, the image is, is really the, the focal point that pressed in design is really what you want people to see. It's just kind of nice to pop in some color in there. Once I have that completely colored in with my watercolors, I am going to pop up a sentiment using some thin foam squares using one of those sentiments from the Always and Forever set. And this is perfect because I'm going to send this to my niece for a wedding card since she just recently got married. So I kept that very clean and simple. I let that design and that whole letter press do the work for me and make that the focal of the card. So there are lots of fun techniques that you can do with your letterpress designs or your cardstock behind your letterpress designs. And one of the things that drew my attention immediately was, could I do ink blending, of course. So here I grabbed some Distress Oxide inks and a blending brush, and I'm starting off with Salvaged Patina. Now this was the set that was included in my bundle, and I'm adding that Salvaged Patina down towards the bottom. I'm bringing in Peacock Feathers, and then I'll go to the top of the cardstock with a blueprint sketch. Now, I will say after some more experimenting, I have found that I prefer to ink blend first and then do the letterpress design. So that totally works. This works as well, but I just find that the black stands out a lot better. The black ink uh, stands out a lot better when I am doing that on top of my blended background. Another thing that I found was for my blending, I was using a blending brush, but I prefer to use the dome foam tools from Ranger. The blending brush is to me more for a smooth work, a uh, smooth card surface. And this has a little bit of texture to it. It's a little thicker and fibrous. So you can use blending brushes, but I think the dome foam blending tools just kind of work easier and don't have as much resistance. Now, one fun thing that I have here, as you may have seen, I added splatters of water to my background, and that led me to this idea of putting a little bit of water down on my work surface. I picked it up with a paintbrush, and I am applying that water all over my floral image. Because the Distress Oxides have that reactive water property, uh, this looks really great, makes the flower stand out almost kind of glowing. So a really fun technique that you can do with this in any type of reactive ink that you have. So this could be distress inks, just to distress oxide inks. And then I just came in with a paper towel and picked up any excess water where I may have applied too much water at one point. I attached this to a side folding card base and then I took that butterfly from earlier. I ink blended that, also did some water coloring on it, just applying water over my image for that same look and then added that to my card front with some foam squares to finish off this card. Well, I thought I was finished. I decided I wanted to add some gems, so I grabbed some from my collection that I got from Spellbinders. These kind of have a blue tone to them, which I thought matched my background really well. And then for my other card, I came back in with some silver pearls. Now I'm going to call it good on my cards. So not only does this better press letter press give such an amazing look and gives that pressed in design and great feel to it as well, but you can also do coloring and your background. So I think there are a lot of great options for the better press system. I hope you enjoyed today's inspiration. I want to thank you so much for joining me. 